All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much for joining today. This is webinar three in our four part series, and we are covering meal planning. It's actually meal planning and prep. And we're gonna tackle everything there is to, there needs to be to, to know about meal planning and prep and just how to make it quick and easy and effortless. So um, we'll also be using the chat function too. So if you have some questions along the way, feel free to put, to put those out there. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So first I wanna introduce myself for those who may not know, I'm Mandy Curry. I'm the co-founder of Healthy Kids Inc. and also the co-founder of Start a Garden. Um, you'll notice with Healthy Kids Inc. that we are the only meal planner that actually includes gardening as a part of our technology platform. So we show families how the full seed to table process. We show them how to grow the foods, how to meal plan with them, and then also how to cook with them too. Um, so that's using a lot of our starter garden technology. And we find that that's really important. Gardening is a really, um, definitely a growing industry right now and more and more families are becoming interested in gardening, so we were really excited to be able to include that and integrate that into the meal planning technology. So as we start to talk a little bit about meal planning, you know, I'll kind of share some of our background over the last couple of years. You know, we, um, Healthy Kids Inc. is now seven years old. So we've had a chance over the last seven years to really just gather so many stories and so much from the families that we work with, the members that are in our community, and what we have found is really interesting. We're all facing many of the same challenges. We are all so busy in all of our own different ways. And, and really time is our biggest, is really our biggest hurdle right now. Um, and it does not discriminate. I mean, time is an issue with everyone, it seems like in our community because we are juggling so much now. We're juggling sports and after school commitments and work and family commitments. So we just have so much going on now. And about a year or so ago, we launched a national survey because we wanted to validate some of the things that we were hearing from some of those in our community. And so obviously we asked, you know, one of the first hurdles, one of the questions was, what was your biggest hurdle with healthy eating? And of course, time was really one of the biggest obstacles. But then we asked moms, you know, what, what would make them most proud? What part of their journey and this healthy eating journey would make them most proud? What outcome would they be, love to be able to see? And we expected a number of things. We expected, you know, weight loss. And, and certainly weight loss was on there, but it wasn't as high as what we, what we thought. What actually ranked highest among all of our, those who, who we surveyed was more fruit and vegetable consumption. That was the one outcome that they were looking for that if they achieved that, they would feel so good about what they were doing. And so that has really become our mission at Healthy Kids Inc. is to really help families with that fruit and vegetable consumption because that's really what's key. So I'll talk a little bit about where we're at right now with fruit and vegetable consumption just as a point of reference. So today, roughly a third of adolescents, this is just a sample of nine um, grades nine through 12, one third of adolescents grades nine through 12 consume less than one serving of fruit and vegetable a day. The average is about two. Um, so a third aren't even getting one serving of a fruit or vegetable a day. And we're struggling with par as parents too. Only a fourth of parents are consuming, uh, or one fourth of parents consume less than one serving of fruit and vegetable a day. So that is much of the problem is, is that our days are going by and we're just not getting a lot of nutrients. We're not getting that fruit and vegetable consumption. And this is a really important part of the meal planning process. But here's what happens, and this was actually something that happened in our family, and this was a real, and this sometimes happens more than we would like to admit, but this is a day in the life of our kids. You know, we, are, we found this, I'd say probably a couple of years ago, that, you know, our, our kids' day would look like cereal with whole milk, you know, a foot-long sub that might just be ham and cheese. Maybe it was a pizza flatbread then along the way. Maybe it's goldfish crackers and a chicken and rice dinner. Obviously, there's a lot of food on there, but if you look at all the food, though, what, what I found, what we found a couple of years ago when we started to assess this is that our kids were eating all day long. They were eating all this stuff, and they were getting zero fruits and vegetables, and so that really prompted a lot of our Healthy Kids Inc. journey in creating this meal planning tool, but you can see how easy it is, though, before at the end of the day, we realize, oh my gosh, you know, we haven't had any fruits and vegetables for the whole day, and so... You know, that's why this is really important to kind of get proactive and to get ahead of it. 
And really what we're striving for with the kids is if we are able to include and consume five fruits and vegetables a day, that is huge. I mean, that's our ultimate goal. And this is what that looks like. It's really not that much. And if you generally focus on just, you know, one fruit or vegetable at every meal and snack, well, then you've got it. You've got it licked. That's how easy this is. So it takes us a little bit, if we kind of focus on what we're putting in and just making sure that somewhere along the way we're trying to get a fruit or vegetable in, mostly vegetables if at all possible, but if we can do that, then all of this becomes really, really simple. It's just that easy. So one of the things that we find too with the families that we work with and those who come to Healthy Kids Inc, because most families are coming to Healthy Kids Inc because they are looking for a meal planning you know, solution, a meal planning technology solution, um, one of the biggest challenges that we all face is just that guilt. It's that guilt and that shame. It's that guilt that we're just not cooking enough or that guilt we feel when we have to eat out again or that guilt we feel when we should be doing more. We feel like we should be doing more. And so our mantra at Healthy Kids Inc. is, you know, it's just progress over perfection. We are not going to strive to be perfect all the time. We don't want the guilt. We don't want the shame because that's the worst thing that we can do. The worst thing we could do is have guilt and shame because that changes everything. That changes the way that our energy levels are. It changes the way we, you know, we show ourselves to our children. It, it changes everything. So really, it's just about kind of accepting where we are, making a little bit of progress each and every week. And letting you know a system help along the way, and that's really why we built Healthy Kids Inc. We built it to be your first step. We are your getting started place if you are getting started with meal planning. And hopefully throughout this presentation, you'll have a chance to see just how simple it can be. One of the things that we believe strongly in is using systems instead of using willpower because that's where sometimes things start to go haywire a little bit for us. So you might have heard um, about, it's called the what the heck effect. And the what the heck effect is proven. It's a proven study. And I'm sure you've all been here because I know that I sure have too, where you have a day and you start out and you're really rushed in the morning and probably maybe didn't have a chance to really plan what you were even going to eat for the morning. So you hop on out the door and you grab donuts and a coffee for breakfast. Well, you know what? Then lunch comes around and you're like, well, what the heck? I've already had donuts and a coffee for, for breakfast. I might as well go eat out for lunch. And so you go eat out. And then that what the heck comes up again, it's dinner time. And you're like, man, you know what? I've already had donuts and coffee for breakfast. I've had a pretty crappy lunch. I had to eat fast food because I was really rushed at work. And I really don't wanna deal with dinner tonight. I've already eaten out twice. So what the heck, let's just get a fast food pizza tonight and we'll deal with it tomorrow. And so that's what happens. It's called this what the heck effect. And it's just because, you know, once it starts kind of off a little, we just sometimes let it go. It's just human nature. And that is okay. That is okay. And what we're going to be talking about then is how do you let your system do the heavy lifting so that you don't have to rely on your willpower? Because the thing with willpower is it is a muscle. Willpower is a muscle and you, it's not an infinite supply every day. So every day you wake up and you only have a finite supply of willpower to use throughout the day. And that willpower is used when making decisions on traffic in the morning, on your food choices, when you're dealing with demanding bosses, when you're dealing with colleagues, when you're dealing with upset children, all of those scenarios all throughout the day are starting to deplete your willpower. It's decision fatigue. And so that's what happens is by the time the end of the day rolls around and you've had this exhausting day, you've been making decisions all day long, the last thing you want to have to think about is what's for dinner? Because we just don't even care at that point. Isn't it wild that how you, you make the biggest decisions all day long and when it comes to dinner, the, the, you know, the smallest thing, it's, it's sometimes that just feels like the biggest decision. It feels like it's just way too much for us to handle because we are exhausted at the end of the day. I love talking about this because it, there was a, um, this came up about, you know, why does Mark Zuckerberg always wear the same t-shirt? If you've seen him on any news sites or anywhere where they're talking about Mark Zuckerberg or Facebook, 
he's always going to be in a similar style t-shirt, a similar color t-shirt. And his reason for that is, is that he wants to make as few decisions as possible about things like that, about what to wear, because he wants to be able to save his decisioning power for things that are really important. And so that's a really great testament of, of using systems so that you don't have to really think about it at the end of the day. We don't want to have to make that what's for dinner decision at five or six o'clock at night when we're fatigued because we know it's never going to be a good decision. It's rarely ever going to be a good decision. So if you can eliminate some of those decisions and let your system work for you, then what a difference that makes. So now I'm going to show you our strategy that we use for meal planning. And this is actually the Healthy Kids Inc. system. And whether you use the Healthy Kids Inc. system or not, so as we talk through these strategies, I think you'll have some aha moments of things that you can easily incorporate into your, into your weekly routine to make meal planning really, really simple. Because what our whole goal is, is to take something that generally or could take as long as two hours and let's get it done in just a couple of minutes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to the Healthy Kids site. So bear with me for just a moment while I stop sharing this, and we will. All right, so now we are actually, we are in the Healthy Kids page. Um, this is our meal planning page. So what I'd like to show you then, I'll, there's a couple of ways that we strategize our meal planning efforts. And I'm gonna start, so this is our dashboard. Um, a quick look, our users are able to create saved weeks of meal plans. We have a featured week. Um, this is our garden integration, and then members also have their favorites list. So what we do to help then is we start with the featured week. So in this case, this is what Healthy Kids Inc. does. So every week we go and we create for all of our users a featured week of meals. And what we've done is we know these recipes like the back of our hand because we created them. So it doesn't take us very long to do this. But what we do then is we help to create a meal plan using common ingredients and also using ingredients that are in season right now. So if you look at this time of year, this is a great time of year where we have an abundance of peppers, we have an abundance of zucchini, we have an abundance of tomatoes, those are great things that we can include in our weekly lineup. They're gonna be cheaper to buy at the store or you might even be growing them right now. So that's how we strategize what goes into the featured week. So in this case, we have a Philly cheesesteak and the Philly cheesesteak is going to have peppers on it, maybe some onions. There's a garden lasagna that includes, I'll pull up this, pull this up and you can see quickly what the garden lasagna includes. Obviously a lot, it's got zucchini and carrots and fresh corn. A lot of great ingredients that are in season right now. The unstuffed peppers is another great one, and that one includes bell pepper um, and tomatoes, both of which are in season right now too. So that's primarily our strategy. The other thing that we're including in this recipe is the use of, or in this week, is the use of quinoa. So quinoa is a really great addition to your weekly lineup, and in this case, we have three recipes that are using it. So the unstuffed peppers uses quinoa, we have these power bars that also use quinoa and a mandarin chicken quinoa salad. Now you don't have to use that much quinoa, that many quinoa recipes, but you can see though how it helps when we're starting to, to create our plan using common ingredients. And, and so I'll show you what the shopping list looks like for this, just as a point of reference to see how easy it is. So here we have all of our recipes for the week. These are just five. We didn't go overboard with dinners. I mean, we actually have a snack in here and then the mandarin orange quinoa salad could be a lunch recipe. So we have about three dinners and then two other meals located here. But you can see what the shopping list looks like. It's not anything that's overwhelming, looks pretty good. Um, if you have some of these items, which obviously you're probably gonna have salt and you're gonna have pepper. Um, so you could go ahead and you could just uh, X those out, no need to keep those since you've already got items. So as you have items on hand, you just simply cross them off here. And this is all that you do. I mean, it's just this simple to create your featured week of meals. What I love to look for as we were talking about fruit and vegetable consumption is how many fruits and vegetables have I included in this weekly lineup? So here you can see, you know, we've got roughly about seven-ish um, that we have here. When you start doing this, you're probably going to notice that your fruit and vegetable consumption, where you might only be buying 
maybe you know one to two fruits and vegetables a week, you're probably going to see it go up to as many as 15. We've seen our, some of the meal plans that have as many, you know, anywhere between 12 and 15 different fruits and vegetables for the week. And that is amazing because that's what we're trying to get to. So now you can see we have a lot of common ingredients in this. Obviously our oils are in here, so we can go ahead and remove that because you likely have those at home. You're going to be finding your quinoa in here. So a lot of different options that we have, but this is what it looks like. Very, very simple. All right, so this is, um, and also I'll, I'll, note, I'll make a quick um, observation here about the, the produce list. We also have a little, um, if there is an item on your produce list that is a part of the Dirty Dozen, and that is the Environmental Working Group's Dirty Dozen list, we put a little O out here as a little notation, just as a reminder that, hey, this is on the Dirty Dozen list. If you can, and if your budget allows, and you want to purchase organic, this will be a great time to do it. If not, that's just fine too, or you might even want to grow it. So things like bell peppers are on the Dirty Dozen list. Um, tomatoes, grapes. So in that case, if it's pasta sauce, you probably would see the organic notification there too. Again, not a requirement that you do it, but we just try to take all of the guesswork out of it so that when you get to the grocery store, you don't even have to think or wonder, should I purchase this organic or should I not? We have done all of that work for you. So this again is what the featured week of meals looks like. And again, that's just our strategy to help you with the meal planning process. Now, there is another though way to do it, and that is by actually creating your own week of meals. And this is really where the beauty starts. So whether you use the Healthy Kids Inc. system or use your own system, this is really what we have found over the years, the strategy that works best with, with the families, especially with busy families. So what you see here is just a weekly calendar. And what we do for this is we actually have a notes section. So where we recommend is that you start with the notes section and really start to outline what's happening with your week. So let's just say, for example, you know, here maybe we have football practice at 5 p.m. I'm just kind of making some of this up, but maybe football practice at 5 p.m. again. And then maybe we hear we have dance class at 7 p.m. And maybe you have a work event um, right here. So you're going to use this to, to really just keep track of everything that's going on for the week so that then you can plan your meals accordingly. So if we know we've got football practice at 5, then we're either going to have to eat before or after, likely after. So dinner is going to have to be super ready and prepped really quickly. So this is just your guide to get you going. Then all that you do from that point is just start to look through the meals and decide what's really important to you and what you want to be able to focus on this week. So maybe you and your family, maybe you've got breakfast taken care of and breakfast isn't even one that you have to even think about. So no need to worry about breakfast. Um, let's say, for example, and, and maybe lunch is okay too. So maybe you're just simply focusing on dinner meals, which is perfect. So in that case, we'll just simply load the dinner meals, and there are many, many dinner options to choose from. In fact, that's mostly what we have. Um, a little under, about 250 roughly dinner recipes that are out here. So plenty of choices and ways that you can create and customize these to, you know, to your liking. So you, maybe you decide that you do like that, that unstuffed pepper recipe and you wanna just pull that over. Or, and then maybe you like, maybe you wanna do a Taco Tuesday. And so you're going to pull Taco Tuesday over. And uh, let's see here. Maybe we do a cauliflower shrimp fried rice. And so, you know, we recommend to our families who are just starting the meal plan to take it slow because trying to fill every box in this calendar is probably going to be a little much. So, if, so what we recommend is, especially when you're starting out, if you want to include a couple of new recipes, that's great. But go slow. I mean, maybe it's only two new recipes for that week. The rest are the old recipes that you've been using, and that's perfect. So maybe on this one, it's just going to be your own homemade pasta. I'll just say that, for example. And then Friday, maybe it's um, some sort of like a hamburger, hamburger night. So you're just going to input your own options, whatever that you want to do. And then you can move your dinners around if they decide, if you decide it just doesn't really work for the week that you have in mind. But that's all that you're doing. So for meal planning, it is just simply laying everything out, 
Um, and if you want to, even if you're not using meals from the meal planner, you could still go ahead and add breakfast. I mean, maybe breakfast is just your own homemade smoothie that you make that you really like. And so you're just going to go in and you're going to add that for every day of the week. And the same thing for lunch, whatever works for lunch. But you can take this and make it as much as you want or as little as you want. We generally focus a lot on dinner. That seems to be um, obviously always the, the part that we're really, really trying to focus on. But the great thing is, is that once you have this, then it can be shared with the whole family. So you can save it. So in this case, we'll just say, this is maybe one of your busy sports week. And so you're gonna save your week. And that's it, you can print it. Uh, if you want, you can pull it up on your mobile device so that you have it at all times. Um, but you're going to be able to, you know, go back in here and you'll be able to see exactly what you just created. There we go. There it is. So it's really, really simple to be able to do that. And really, that's all that's all that it is. So you'll find that if you are creating your own week of meals that you can do this, you can create this on a desktop version. You can also create on a, on a tablet. Now to drag the meals we can't do that on the on the mobile phone, but you can do it on the tablet and on the desktop. But you can pull everything up on your um, you can pull everything up on your mobile device once you have it. And then you're going to see as you drug everything over, your shopping list is going to populate automatically again, which makes that really really nice. And then that's it. You're going to be done. You can print your shopping list or just take it with you. And as you get things at the grocery store, you can just simply cross it off. Now, the really other cool part about this is that you can now, so many different grocery stores have the online ordering. So you can just do this from the comfort of your own home. You can go ahead and plan out your entire week of meals. You have everything that you need now for your shopping list to pull that off. You know, we've looked down here. We don't have a whole lot of recipes out here, obviously. And so we can see we have a couple of, of produce items, not a whole lot of fruits and vegetables, but we have some though, which is a great start. Now you can just take this list over to your online grocery ordering and you can simply just add items as you find them, as whatever that you need. The, the whole process now of meal planning and grocery shopping, what once has taken hours can now just be done you know, in a matter of 15 minutes, including ordering your groceries online. So it is a really, really simple process. All right, I'm gonna head back to the presentation real quick and then we'll come back to the site in just a moment. All right, so as we continue to talk, I wanna hit a little bit about money saving tips and why meal planning is really important and, and what really what our families are looking for. Because while we find with our families that that peace of mind is really critical and they love that they are increasing fruit and vegetable consumption too, but saving money is also another really big part of that too. So here are our top save money saving tips. The first of which was just simply making a list and sticking to it. And we always say purchase with a plan because what usually happens when we're trying to, um, when we don't have that plan, when we go to the grocery store is that we end up just doing those spontaneous purchases. And before we know it, we've spent a fortune and haven't really gotten what we really needed. And I think we've all probably been in those types of situations where you went to the grocery store, you know, you spent more than a hundred dollars and you probably have stuff for one or two meals. And so this really helps to create that list, have that purpose, and, and, and be purchasing with a plan. And so that makes sure that we're staying within our budget. And then the other great part is too, when you do the online grocery ordering, you're gonna be able to see what, how much you're spending right off the bat. And so if you find that you're spending too much, then you can easily go back and just adjust and then adjust your, your weekly meal plan too. So that makes it even easier. We always recommend that you buy what you need for the week. And, and a lot of families feel very differently about this. Some like to buy their foods for the entire month. But what we generally find though, is that there is so much food waste now. In fact, it's estimated that we throw out about 25% of our food. So what that equates to is about $180 a month of food that we buy that we end up throwing out because we didn't eat. And most of the time it's fruits and vegetables. And that adds up to over $2,000 a year that we end up just wasting because we bought it. We didn't really know what we were gonna do with it. Maybe you bought an eggplant because you've really been wanting to try something with eggplant, but it just didn't last until it was used. So things like that happen a lot. So we always recommend, you know, just buying for what, just for what you need for that week. And then maybe a couple of extras. 
I always like to have one of those special meals on hand for, you know, one of those meals where maybe it wasn't in the meal plan, but if, it, but if I'm really rushed and I need to pull something together really quickly, then I'll have it. Um, something like occasional, maybe it's a, a whole grain pasta and then just a jar of sauce. I mean, something that if I have to use it, we can always pull that out as our standby meal. So if you always have a standby meal on top of your weekly lineup, that's great. But, um, but again, buying too much in bulk, generally find that it's hard to kind of use it all. And, um, you know, and, and again, we'll end up just wasting a lot of it. And then of course you can freeze your produce. It's getting a little too ripe. So things like your bananas, you know, bananas are actually the number one purchase thing at the grocery store and very, very common, but you might find that the bananas start to get too ripe before you can use them. So one of the great things that you can do in that case is just to place them in a freezer bag, put them in the freezer, and then you can use them for smoothies. You can use them for banana ice cream. So great. It's a great way to use them. So you don't have to throw them away. And another great money saving tip is to compost and compost is great because it, you know, when you do have those fruits and vegetables that are going bad and you know, they have to be tossed out. Well, at least there's such a better peace of mind knowing that they can go into compost and be put to good use. So compost is a really great money saving tip. All right. So now we are going to talk. So we've talked about meal planning. We showed a little bit of the healthy kids insight and how we use that to strategize what the meal planning is. Now I want to talk about, you know, it, this is the, the yin to your yang, and this is meal prep. And oftentimes these are confused and sometimes used interchangeably. So in this case, what is meal prep? Well, that is just simply finding some places and each recipe where you can trim your time a little bit. And so this is what's really important especially if you find that your day is really busy, you have a lot going on at night and you really need to get your meals ready, you know, in under 20 minutes. So this is why meal prep is going to be critical. And, and the thing with meal prep is, is this is the part that can probably take a little bit longer. And so again, but this is where you get to really just choose how far do you want to take it? So there are three ways that you can meal prep and three different levels of meal prep. So the first one is, and so, so meal prep, for example, I'm going to go back to the Healthy Kids site, and I'm just going to show you a quick example of what that looks like. So let's go back here. All right. So let me go, go to one of those recipes that we had talked about. Let's look at the, let's look at this unstuffed pepper recipe. Okay, so the unstuffed pepper recipe, if you look here, so here are some really simple things. And we, for every recipe, we have prep notes too. So we're going to help you along the way. So what we're trying to do is we're just trying to find those small little ways that you can save a little time. So you can see the ingredients that we have here. It's the quinoa, the bell pepper. There is a little bit of cutting and chopping. And so if you can do some of that in advance, then that's great. So things like chopping your vegetables would be wonderful. I mean, I find that anything I can chop and cut in advance, the day that I bring the produce home, put it into some small containers, then the more likely I am to pull that out and to use it, it's just gonna cut my cooking time down considerably too. So if you can do some of your cooking and chopping in advance, that's great. You could even take it a step further and you could pre-cook your quinoa. The quinoa will last in your refrigerator for the whole week. So if you wanted to, and considering that we have three dishes for that week that involve quinoa, well, you could go ahead and just make your quinoa in advance too. So those are really simple things that you could do. Um, and I'll show you a few more options as well. So if you are limited on time, then you can absolutely just cut your vegetables. So let me show you, this is a video that we have on what a fully, fully prepped week. And this is the Mac Daddy prep system. So in this case, and I'll turn this volume down. So you, um, but in this case, this would be just the bare minimum. So if you wanted to just get your vegetables if you want to get your vegetables sorted out and trimmed, just like we have here in this container right there, that's perfect. That can be step one if you have limited prep time to just get that little bit of prep done and together. Now, we'll show you the second thing. So the second thing that you can do is a little bit more of a detailed prep. So this is where you're actually going to cook your most time-consuming pieces of your dish. So we can go actually through this video and these videos are all out um, on the Healthy Kids Inc. member site and they're also on YouTube as well. But you can see what we're doing right here. So what we're doing is everything that we have for that meal is going into its own container. 
Well, that doesn't have to happen on um, if you're doing kind of that mid-level. This is really kind of that, that advanced ultra meal prep system. But you can see though that we've started to portion everything out. So some of the things, um, in this case we have, we're making some veggie burritos. So we've made all of the veggie burrito mix in advance, put it in a container with our shells, so that all we have to do when we come home is just simply wrap our little veggie burritos and that's it. And then dinner is ready. So it's real, real simple if you wanted to go that far out. Um, I'll show another example too. This is one, I think we might be making the cauliflower cheeseburger pie. So we're using cauliflower in place of bread in this case. So here we just have everything portioned out. So we've got these little small plastic containers with lids where we might put our spices and we'll portion out our spices. And we've got our cheese portioned out and we've got the cauliflower cleaned and it's trimmed and it's ready to use. So these are all things that you could do in advance so that as soon as you get home or the first person who gets home in the evening, and which might even be the children, so the kids, if you have teens who, are, who like to cook and want to get involved, then they could be the first ones to come out and they can pull out their container that has everything that they need in it and they could follow the directions. Every recipe that we have on the site includes a chef's cooking video so they can actually follow along with the chef and they can then start to cook dinner. Obviously getting the kids involved is huge and that's a really important part of it. Um, but that's all that we're doing right here is we're just portioning everything out to make sure that it's all ready. This takes a little bit of time. You know, you might take as much as an hour on a Sunday perhaps, getting all this organized and getting all this ready. But what you will find though is that it not only just cuts your cooking time down during the week, but it also eliminates any willpower issues because you know that in your refrigerator when you get home is everything you need to pull this dish together in just a couple of minutes. I say a couple of minutes, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, but it's really just that simple. So a little bit of work on the weekend will do wonders. So we actually don't, you know, we aren't fans of making up the whole meal on the weekend. I mean, some, some do, and that's perfect. And we still like that element of freshness every night. We just like to make sure when we're cooking that it's much simpler and easier and faster. So that is, this is what the meal prep system does. And so if you want to continue to kind of look at these and look for some ideas, we do have a couple of videos on YouTube about it, but it's a really simple, you know, it's a really simple process. And once you get into the hang of it, then it all just kind of works itself out and it, it, you'll find that it, it goes faster and faster every week. And there might be some weeks where you don't even have time for this. Um, there are certainly weeks where I don't. Um, I mean, there are some weeks where all I can do is just cut a couple vegetables and that's it. There are some weeks where all I can do is just meal plan and I have zero time for prep. And that's fine too. Again, there's no guilt, there's no shame. We're just doing a little bit of progress. It's always progress over perfection. It's just a little, little, little steps each and every week that make a really big difference. So the other really cool part too, and I will pull this up as well, let's see. So the other really neat part about once you have this prep in place, and this is one of my favorite like before and after refrigerator um, examples that we have. All right, so one of the great things is, you know, before and after, because you, you might be able to relate to this, that you go to the grocery store, you bring everything home and you just shove it in the refrigerator because we don't want to deal with it anymore. And so the other beauty of meal prep is that you can really start to organize your refrigerator and everything starts to have a place because when it is kind of, you know, when everything is just shoved in there, well, it's very easy to lose things. We kind of forget what we have. We forget what we're going to make. Um, so as we were talking, this idea of this kind of system, this full meal prep system where everything that you need for every night's worth of meals is kind of in its container. And again, that's a pretty bit of an advanced meal prep strategy. You might find that this is way too much, um, that your family would not want to take on that task of, of fully prepping at this level. But for those who are really looking for some help on the meal planning and the meal prep side and are just so busy, you might find that this is a, something great to test with. And even if you don't do it for all five days, even if you just do it for one day, maybe it's just for one of your days when you have you know, football practice at five and you need to have a very quick dinner that you just experiment with getting everything you need for that meal ready, portioned out, you know, prepped as much as you can so that that night 
you can have dinner, a homemade, fresh cooked dinner ready in about 10 to 15 minutes. So that's ultimately what we're looking for. And there's just something that's great about the feel of this too, the, the look of this refrigerator that's just so refreshing and just a really great way to kick off the week. So again, you'll find, um, you can find these videos. We actually did, this is in one of our members' homes. We went and did a whole refrigerator makeover with all of their groceries for the week. So if you actually wanna find that, you can go um, onto our YouTube channel and, and check that out. All right, so now we'll talk about some of our, you know, the, the, now it's, you know, what are some of our, you know, easiest meals? What are some things that we recommend? And, and really what we have found over the years is that it's such a personal choice when it comes to meals. And, um, you, you know, what might work for one family is certainly not going to work, you know, for another. So what we're always looking for are just those, those, those standbys, those standbys that are, that are healthy, but you know you can whip those up really quickly. So what, you, what we do, and here's a list of just favorites that we kind of go to often, and then you would have your own list as well. And the great thing is, is that once you're inside the meal planner, you can just put, make a little notation of those ones that you really like and you wanna be able to pull those back often. You know, but easiest meals that are great um, and, and quick to pull off, obviously, are just, you know, a crunchy veggie burrito. We talk about this one so much, and we've talked about it in previous webinars too, but it's such, a, it's such an easy one. It's loaded with veggies. It's got a great how-to video here. You can see all the different vegetables that you can grow um, within this recipe too, which is really cool. It's great for the kids to be able to see that as well. And then you can also see exactly what you can prep in advance to pull that off. So if you're able to, to use this recipe and prep it in advance, you're probably going to have this, this meal ready in about five minutes, which is great. And the kids can even eat it in the car if they needed to. Um, here's a Tex-Mex that is another really easy recipe. You know, on, a, on one like this, if you just simply cooked your brown rice in advance, then you're gonna have this dish ready in no time. And um, so really, really simple to pull this one together too. So, so you're, you'll find that over time that your family will start to kind of gravitate towards some new favorites and start to, um, you know, you'll, your repertoire of favorites will continue to grow. Um, another really easy one is a Philly cheesesteak pizza. And, and here we're using the non bread. Um, there are a lot of other options that you can use. Um, this is the non, like the pita bread. And again, many, many options. You could certainly make your own homemade crust, whatever that you want to do. But you know, by simply just slicing your veggies during your prep, you're gonna have this ready to toss into the oven in just a couple of minutes. And that's again, what we're really looking for to have, how quickly can we pull off dinner? Can it be done in just a few minutes? Then here's the chef's video. And you can see the chef pulled this whole recipe together in about five minutes. So a really, really simple one. So when it comes to easiest meals, again, it's really just, just a preference as to what, what your family likes. And we've tried to do, you know, to really just give a good variety of meals. And, you know, generally families stick with about the same seven to 10 meals. And I know families are always looking for a little bit of variety, but generally speaking, you know, that seven to 10, maybe to 14 meals that you just kind of rotate in and out is generally where most families like to stay. And that certainly makes sense. So that really takes care of everything in the, you know, for, for meal planning and for meal prep. And again, we've really just tried to show just how easy this can be, that it's not overwhelming. You know, we don't even expect our families to use this system forever. I mean, this is, as we mentioned early on, you know, this is your starting point. This is the starting point for those who are wanting to embark on, you know, a healthier lifestyle, but are so busy and I just don't know quite how to pull it all together. Well, that's what this is. And then you're going to find that after you meal plan and you prep one week, two weeks, a month, after a month, you're going to feel really good. Um, we have members who say, you know, I watched the chef's videos for a couple of weeks and I feel so much more confident about cooking now just after watching those videos. So that's perfect. So they don't have to watch the videos anymore, you know, and it's the same thing for meal planning. Once you do it for a couple of weeks, then you just kind of know, you know what recipes really work with your family. And then you don't have to go even through this process it all just becomes so much simpler. Another really big part of the process and a part of, of meal planning and making it super easy is also just 
looking at the quality of foods that we are buying at the grocery store too. Um, so if you have an interest and want to see, you know, what are the best things to buy at the grocery store, you can actually check out our previous webinar that we did, which was for back to school. It was a back to school lunch and breakfast for kids. And in that process, we talked a lot about the best and products to buy at the grocery store. And we have a lot of other resources around that same thing too. But, you know, it's what a difference it makes though to just buy different products. And so that's where meal planning can also be super easy as well. So that is it. Nice, short, and sweet. I hope that after this very short webinar that you feel a little bit of that pressure off. And you know that, again, no guilt, no shame, just, you know, we take it meal by meal and week by week. And if we can just meal plan or, you know, meal prep one or two recipes a week, man, that's great. And that's a huge improvement. And if we're looking at, you know, and the great thing about the meal plan is that it's a great validation of the fruits and vegetables that your family's eating. And so if you can use that then, and, and really just, if you can use that as validation of all the great things that you're doing, I mean, that's huge. So we hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, I put into the chat our, we have one more webinar in our series and so on kids health. So we're going to be talking about um, really just, this is probably our most heartfelt webinar of all. We will be talking about recipes, but we're also just going to be talking about families, health in general, and just starting to really overcome some of those, you know, those big, tough topics that we have when it comes to kids' health. So, you know, we're very excited about this one. We hope that you'll want to join us. We'll be talking about our top tips and foods and picky eaters and picky families and all of that great stuff. We'll be tackling all of that in next week's webinar in our fourth and final webinar of the series. So thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions, please reach out anytime. Be sure to check out the website and I hope that you have a great upcoming week of meal planning. All right, thanks again for joining and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.